Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Welcome back. Today we're gonna do a knife build. We're gonna build a little paring knife. I'm gonna be making it with S35VN. Uh, the piece that we're using is 1 16th inch thick, so it's nice and thin. And then this is inch and a half wide, wider than we need it to be, but this was a leftover piece from a different knife. And uh, we're five and a half inches, so we've got a kind of a design constraint. I like the look of this. I think we might be getting a little bit farther away from a paring knife, more to like a petty. Um, this is gonna be it, this is gonna be the knife, just like that. Let me clean this a minute. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these lines. And voila, I like that shape, I like that shape. So here's my photocopy, and I'll cut it out with my X-Acto knife. Hello, Priscilla. It's warmed up a bit, but this morning it was minus 22 Celsius. And since I like to do all my angle grinding outside, I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Ah, it's cold. It's painfully cold. All right, so we've got this thing roughly profiled now. I actually really like that shape. I still need to come in here and with a small contact wheel and put a radius on there. It's kind of flat right now. We're gonna do that after, but while I have the flat platen on, I'm going to take my tang down to the dimension that I want. This one is gonna be 3 8 of an inch, so I've marked that out. I just did some simple math there. I'm not gonna bore you with that stuff. But I've also marked where I want the shoulder to be. Not everybody does this step. Some people leave their tangs like this. But I actually like to have a step in my tang. I'm gonna put my Bill Benke file guide on here. I'll clamp it nice and straight into there. Get that clamped on and then we'll grind this down and grind this down. Now I want to kind of take a real small needle file and put a radius on there just so we don't have a hard edge. There's, in theory, a possibility you could get a stress fracture if you have a real hard 90 degrees. I've never seen it happen, but the theory is there and for the time it takes just to round that over a little bit, like that, it's probably worth, worth doing just so we avoid any possibilities of getting a fracture there. Okay, now we're gonna put our little choil in there and I'm gonna grind a couple of little grooves in here so the epoxy can bite. step of this process is to heat up the kiln. So, I call, make sure I don't have anything in there. No, we're good. So I'm gonna put a little, uh, put a little foil pouch together. This is a stainless steel foil. We'll do a plate quench and we'll go ahead and uh, give it a cryogenic treatment. And we're gonna leave it in there for a good 10, 12 hours, I think. And then we'll finish up with our temper cycles. The reason I'm not grinding any bevels on this right now is because it's so thin. If we were to grind our bevels in there, very, very likely we'd get a lot of waving along the edge. 
and I mean really it's a sixteenth of an inch I mean that's pretty thin to begin with it's not going to take a long time because we're not removing tons of material we're going to bring this bevel up like this there will be no distal taper in this knife because well I mean it's it's going to be nice and thin anyways and uh, yeah so as that heats up I'm going to put some baby powder get a lot of questions about this stuff the main reason i like to use this is because it keeps the blade from sticking certain steels are worse than others nitro v is really bad it will stick to this one time i had one that actually welded itself to the pouch i like to avoid that if i can so i slap a little baby powder on here and uh we'll be good to go Good. There we go. Now we're just waiting on the oven. All right, we are at temperature. Let me just see. Let's stick this thing in. Wow, that's hot. And we're going to leave it for 20 minutes. All right, so we've been in the oven for about 20 minutes now. It's 25 minutes, actually. I'm going to take it out, plate quench it, and I've got my compressed air. What that's going to do is these aluminum plates are going to suck that heat out of there very, very quickly. A lot of people wonder why on earth you do this. It doesn't make sense to them, but it's actually a very, very effective way uh, to, to heat treat stainless. This is how pretty much everybody does it. Works like a chimp champ. I just like to get, get the dust out of there. I need some gloves. Get my hearing protection in. Let's do this. Es la muy caliente. Compressed air is helping to cool it down as well. It just pulls the heat away. We're like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Completely cool to the touch. Nice tight little packet there. Yeah. All right, let's cut this thing out of the pouch. Boy, that's a tight one. Beauty. There's a little bit of, this is where the air got in, but it didn't reach the blade. So you can see that blade hardly had any oxygen on it, which is exactly what we wanted. My, that's a small little knife. I think it's gonna be cute though. End of the day. Put it in the old liquid nitrogen. I'm almost out. But not quite. Okay, we'll let it do its thing overnight, and we'll come back. Do some more temper cycles, and then we can get the grinding. My favorite part, grinding. All right, overnight in the cryo. I'm gonna let this warm up. And then once it's warmed up, we'll uh, finish off the old temper cycles. That sound can mean only one thing. Turn it off because it's annoying. All right guys, we've hardened the blade, we've given it a cryogenic treatment and we've tempered it out two temper cycles at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're ready to grind this little thing now. First thing I'm gonna do is put in a mark along the center so I can have a visual to grind to, basically mark out my center line. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is stick a little wooden handle on this so that I've got more to hold on to than just this little tang when I'm grinding.
Okay, I just want to take a minute and describe kind of exactly how I'm going about this. The key for this whole thing for me is this wooden handle. And what I'm doing is I'm using this finger under the blade just to kind of sort of get a sense of what my angle is. Now, it's the first initial passes that are the most tricky. Once you even have this much of a bevel established, that's enough that I can find it and I can feel it, right? So there's my bevel, there's the flat. And I can reference that, I can basically use that as my datum point. Even if that's not the right angle, what I can do is I can hit that, and then what I'll do is I'll use some rotation in my fingers here. And that will kind of control the angle. So I'm pressing with both thumbs, like that, getting a general sense, but then I'm locking it in with my left hand. And with this little wrapped grip, you know, wrapping my fingers around it, if I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to grow that angle, I can come in, find my datum, and just just articulate the knife like that. So this little handle is just the game changer for me when I'm doing little kitchen blades. You're gonna sacrifice some skin on your fingers, that's kinda how it is, but uh, this little, just think about the roll, you know? Coming in here, okay, whoosh, find that, and we can just kinda roll where we need it to go. This is a 100 grit ceramic, that's what I'm doing my rough grinds to. We'll probably jump Trizact, and I might even take this to the disc grinder, kinda flatten it all out when we're done. But this one's going to be a very, very thin grind at the edge, so let's keep on at it. All right guys, we've taken the blade up to 2000 grit with the hand sanding, it's looking pretty good. You'll see it when we reveal the final knife. Uh, I've just taped it up right now to give it a little protection. Right now we're at about, I think we're like eight thousandths of an inch edge thickness, so it's nice and thin. We're gonna jump onto the handle now, and what I'm gonna be doing for handle for this, I've got this wood right here, and I don't remember what it is called. When I bought this, they said it's a very similar characteristics to bamboo, so it's quite a nice dense wood. Um, it actually, I, I tried this block here and it, it shines up really nice. I think the grain's gonna be good. Um, it's nice to work with this. I had the name written on this big block that I had and then I cut it up into these smaller blocks for handles and I don't know where the name went. So it's a mystery wood, I guess. And I think what I'm gonna do is this, along with a couple of scraps of this burl uh, from a previous knife. So I'm gonna, will be this stuff here. And then I'll do one like this with a piece of white G10 in between because this also has the purple liners. This was basically just cut off of another knife. And I say these scraps for bolsters, so we're going to do that, that, and that with the white in between. And I think it's going to look pretty snazzy. gone ahead and found my center mark here. This is a 1 16th end mill. Essentially, I'm going to be referencing everything off of this and this. As long as I keep my stack lined up, I'll have these all oriented off the same two sides, so they should line up really nice. And I won't be able to drill all the way through with this, but I want to make a nice pilot hole. 
And then this is obviously gonna be the slot, this one I'll end up slotting. But once I'm done this, uh, through all the other pieces, then I can go ahead and enlarge that to a 3 8 hole. And I'm actually going to make a pencil mark here and here, so I can always remember which side I'm orienting, or I'm kind of lining up on. Alright, so this one's going to be the top. So I'm going to come in from the bottom and counter bore it to the 3 8 uh, I don't want to go all the way through because I'm going to end up having this slot right here. But before I put the slot in, I'm going to drill this all the way through. That way when I counter bore my 3 8 it'll be lined up. And then these two I'm going to drill all the way out to 3 8 all the way through them. All right, so this is gonna be the top of our bolster, so I don't wanna go all the way through. So what I've done is I set the stop on the drill press to stop right there. So I'm gonna counter bore this till it stops, and that'll give a little bit of space for the dowel to slide into this top piece. And then once I mill the slot out, we should have just probably like an eighth of an inch of material to file out to get the tang to slide in there. And then the rest of it will all just be holes that the dowel is gonna slip through. So I just started it, but I forgot to record, and I was going to adjust the camera, and I realized I wasn't recording, so I'm going to adjust this, bring it in real tight, and we'll finish milling out this little slot. Now we should have a slot going all the way through. Beauty. All right, so one thing I did off camera is I just thinned down the tang a little bit. I put the Bill Benke file guide back on. That way I have an extra bit of shoulder that I can work to. Um, what we need to do is kind of square out this hole a little bit. And this is just a hacksaw blade that I've cut. I'm kind of set it up for this purpose. So. One thing when I'm working, I always kind of angle it like this, so I'm taking more material off of the inside that's hidden. That way I for sure don't end up with a situation where I end up going too far this way. Oh, we need to be quite a bit bigger yet. That is what I would call a near perfect fit. See that? And especially once we put it in the clamp, get it all together. But this, to me, is done. It's a beautiful fit up right there. Now I need to just smooth all these sides. I'm just kind of curious how, uh, how this is going to look. Oh, good. That fits right nice. And then this guy. Should be able to spin these so they line up real nice and square. That one's great. And this one will go like that. Alright, now for the glue up.
Okay. That should be about right. Okay. All right, so we've let this, uh, this is a five minute epoxy and it's been drying for an hour. Oh boy. I hope I don't regret. Oh my goodness. I think I'm gonna need two hands to pull that out. Stand by. Everybody says, oh, use the wax, leave it in there. And I thought I would try it this time. And, uh, hmm. Come on, come on. Holy smokes. Well, it is sort of coming. Oh. Well, I've got to say, I'm not a fan of the wax method. The way I do it normally, like my way, is just to leave it in there for like two minutes, pull it out, let it cure, and then burn it in. It works just fine. I'm still going to have to heat this up, I think. It's not going to go in and out how I want it to, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and shape this thing up and then we'll do a little more finishing on the blade, make sure it's all cleaned up and then glue the whole issue together. See, we've actually got a really good fit there. So I'm gonna throw a little epoxy on that uh, knife and then we'll glue it in. <gasps> I gotta finish up this and I gotta put my mark on it. I went ahead and I put my maker's mark on there and uh, finished cleaning up the bevels. Took it to 2000 grit. The last step that we have to do tonight is to glue this handle in. Okay, let's wipe this stuff off. Okay, we're just gonna let that sit overnight, and then tomorrow, let's see, tomorrow we'll sharpen it up and take some beauty shots. I'll give you a little tease, how's that?
And that's gonna wrap up this build video for this little paring knife. I'm really, really happy with the way this thing turned out. Nice and light, like 48 grams, I think it was. It's phenomenal, it just feels really nice in hand. Nice small size there, which is kind of what you want for a paring knife, right? Uh, kind of maneuverable. I'm gonna set it down before I cut myself. I'm gonna get that thing listed up on my website, homesteadknives.com. If you'd be interested in knife, you can check out that website. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something, maybe you got a couple little tips or tricks or gave you just some ideas even for your own projects that you might want to apply. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. As always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers.